Greetings to one and all. In today's edition of MMJC Fortnightly podcast, we shall be discussing about the nitty-gritties of filing foreign liabilities and assets return that is FLA return which is covered under Foreign Exchange Management Act related that is FEMA related compliances. Nowadays, cross-border transactions and forex trades are gaining popularity. Corporations and establishments are engaging in foreign investments. Therefore, FEMA related compliances gain a significant importance in the company's operations. Therefore, the RBI has a mechanism in place whereby the onus is put upon the companies undertaking such transactions to report their foreign liabilities and assets in the form of FLA return. RBI compiles this data for the purpose of knowing India's balance of payment position and investment position within and outside the country as at 31st March every year. Now the first question that arises in our mind with respect to FLA return is that which all entities are required to file the FLA return? So the answer to this question is that the FLA return also known as annual return has to be filed on the portal prescribed by RBI by all such entities including companies and limited liability partnerships who have either received foreign direct investment that is FDI or have made any overseas investments. The next question that arises is with respect to the laws governing the FLA return. So as discussed at the beginning, FEMA, FLA returns are covered under FEMA compliances and are governed by Regulation 4 of Foreign Exchange Management Mode of Payment and Reporting of Non-Debt Instruments Regulations 2019 and Regulation 10 of Foreign Exchange Management Overseas Investment Regulations 2022. Now, let's have a look at origin of FLA return. In April 2007, RBI through its circular introduced a revised form FCGPR. The entities were required to disclose the foreign direct investments or FDI received by them in part B of this form as a annual report of FDI received during the financial year. This information had to be provided up to 30th June. Thereafter, uh, in March 2011, RBI through a separate circular introduced an annual return called Statement of Foreign Liabilities and Assets, eventually discontinuing the Part B of FCGPR form. Up to 2018, the procedure for filing the form for FLA return was by sending an email to RBI by 15th July of every year. The same had to be submitted in the soft copy form. Thereafter, in June 2019, with an intent to increase the security levels in data submission and to augment the data quality, RBI, through its circular, seized and halted the web-based email-based reporting system and substituted the same with a web-based reporting system that is submitting the FLA form through an online portal. Now this information gives rise to next question that is how to file the FLA return on the said online portal? The online portal introduced by RBI for filing the FLA return is called as Foreign Liabilities and Assets Information Reporting Portal that is FLAIR Flare Portal. Before filing FLA return through this portal, the eligible entity must register itself on the portal. Once successfully registered, the entity can proceed to file the FLA return by using the user ID and password. The next question is with respect to the due date of filing FLA return. So the due date of filing the FLA return is 15th July of every year. At this date, the companies are required to file the information as at year ended 31st March. Now, what if there is a requirement of modification in the details already submitted 
while filing the FLA return? As just discussed, the last date of filing the FLA return is 15 July. But some companies may not have got their accounts audited till this date. So, there is a likelihood that there may be changes in the figures provided in the FLA return after completion of audit. In such a scenario, the company has an option of submitting the revised FLA return on or before 30th September of the same year. Now, this possibility of not having the audited balance sheet ready before filing the FLA return gives rise to a question that what information should a company provide in FLA return if its balance sheet is not audited before 15th July? The answer to this question is very simple. If the, com unaudit if the audited balance sheet is not available up to 15th July, the company should provide provisional or unaudited figures in the FLA return. And if in case there is any change in the figures after the audit of balance sheet, it can always file the revised return up to 30th September. But what will be the consequences if the company does not file the FLA return up to 15th July for the reason that the audited figures are not available up to that date and the company is not desirous of filing the return with unaudited or provisional figures. Not filing of FLA return within the due date will be considered as FEMA violation and in such a case the RBI can levy the penalty on company. As per RBI circular issued in September 2022, the late submission fee or LSF for filing the FLA return is Rs. 7500 per FLA return. The company can late submit the FLA return up to 3 years from the last due date of filing the FLA return by paying the late submission fee. Then comes the question that whether filing the FLA return by paying the late submission fees is enough or the company is also required to undergo compounding for late filing of FLA return? Then the answer to this question is as discussed above, if the company is filing the return within 3 years of last due date of filing such return, then it can file the same by paying the late submission fee. But if such return is being filed after 3 years of due date, then the company will first have to make a compounding application to RBI. The fees for making such application is Rs 5000 per return. If the RBI allows the compounding, it can impose a fine of Rs 10,000 per return. Only after RBI allows the compounding, the company can submit its returns for the period beyond 3 years from the due date. To explain this condition better, we can take an example that if the company was supposed to file the FLA return by 15th July 2020, and then it can file the same by paying late fees that is rupees 7500 up to 15th July 2023 but if it still doesn't file the return then the company will have to go for compounding and only after the offense is compounded by RBI it will be able to file the return. RBI has authorized its regional offices to compound such offenses. The next question that comes to our mind is that as discussed earlier in this discussion, those entities which have either received FDI or have made overseas investments are required to file FLA return. But if any company has not received any FDI or has not made any overseas investment during the current financial year, then still is it required to file the FLA return? So, the answer to this question is that the com if the company has not received FDI or has made investments during the current financial year but has so made F investments or has received FDI during any previous financial year and has the same outstanding in its balance sheet, 
then it will be required to file the FLA return. The company is required to file such return till the time the FDI or overseas investment is outstanding in the balance sheet of the company. So, are there any entities which are exempt from filing the FLA return? So, answer to this question is yes, there are total 5 kind of entities which are exempt from filing FLA return. They are companies who have issued shares only on non-repatriable basis to non-residents of India, companies who do not have any outstanding balance of FDI or overseas investment as at the end of financial year, companies who have received only share application money but have not received any FDI or have not made any overseas investment, the companies, investing companies if they have made any downstream investment and the companies that have any foreign portfolio investment. Now, after talking about the applicability and due date etc. of the FLA return, let's have a look at the actual structure of the form. This form is divided into 5 parts. The first part that is part 1 talks about the company specific details such as the name of the company, its PAN number, its corporate identification number, the nature of its business etc. The second part talks about the financial figures of the company like paid up share capital, reserves and surplus, profit and loss account, the per details of the sales and purchase of the company etc. The third part talks about the foreign liabilities that is the foreign direct investment, foreign portfolio investment and disinvestment are covered under this part. The part fourth is about the foreign assets that is this part gives in this part the information relating to foreign investments over overseas portfolio investment etc are to be disclosed. The fifth part that is part 5 is called the variation report. This part is auto generated on the basis of the information filled in the earlier parts. The applicant is not able to alter the information reflecting in this part. The company is not required to attach balance sheet, profit and loss account or any other details to the form. Now, let's have a look at the most crucial part of FLA return that is anomalies or difficulties in filing FLA returns. The first anomaly is with respect to availability of audited financial statements till the due date of FLA return. As discussed above, the companies may not have available the audited financial year statements up to 15th July. In fact, in case of small entities like partnership firms etc., the financial statements may not be ready the second anomaly can be the difference in the years followed by the companies. That is, some companies may follow the financial year from January to December, whereas the company is required to provide information in FLA as at 31st March. One more difficulty can arise if the company has more than one activity in any particular financial year. In such a case, the reporting with respect to foreign liabilities and assets has to be done very carefully. So, this is a brief overview about filing of FLA returns. The companies should take care that the FLA is a very important compliance and its non-compliance may trigger fine and penalty. Therefore, it is advisable to file the FLA returns well in time. So, this is all in this edition of MMJC Fortnightly Podcast. Thank you for listening and please feel free to write to us at mmjcinfo at the rate mmjc.in.